Here I have the formula for converting Celsius into Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit is equal to 9 fifths the, times the degree Celsius that you have plus 32. So in this example, 26 degrees Celsius, the, the uh, accurate conversion is 78.8 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to show you how to do that as well as show you how to do a very close approximation that you can do very quickly in your head. Let's get started. Okay, so the first number that we're going to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit is going to be 15 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to show you the simple steps to be able to do this in your head. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take the 15 and we want to double that to 30. Okay, then we're going to move over one decimal place and that 30 becomes a 3. That's the number that we want to subtract from 30 and that will get us 27. Then we have to add 32 back to that and that gets us our answer at 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, let's try another one. So let's do 20 degrees this time, 20 degrees Celsius. So again, we'll start by doubling, that becomes 40. Then we move over one decimal place, the 40 becomes a four, that's what we wanna subtract from 40. That becomes 36, add 32 back to it, and that becomes 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is the same thing. It's just a way to simplify the math so that it's easier to do in your head. You can arrive at the same answer by taking 40, or actually, excuse me, by taking 20, okay, and multiplying it by 1.8, and that will also get you to this answer, which is 36, and then you add 32 back to it, and it's 68. But it's a little tougher to do that in your head, uh, maybe not for some people, but for me anyway, I find it a little easier to just double it, move over one decimal place, subtract that number, and it gets you the same answer, just a little quicker to do it in your head. Let's try the same thing. So, okay, so when you have your degree Celsius is in a multiple of five, these are really easy to do because this number always ends up as a whole number. But let's try one that doesn't and see that you can also do it that way, but you can either do it 100% perfect or you can do a slight estimation. Okay, this time we're going to take 22 degrees Celsius and we're going to first start out by doubling it just like before, okay? And then we're gonna subtract, we're gonna move over one decimal place. Now that would become 4.4, but we're just gonna get a rough estimation. So we're gonna take that 4.4 and round it down to four to make all these whole numbers. So 44 minus four will be 40 add 32 back to that, and that's 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, if we wanted to do this accurately though, this would be 44, okay, minus 4.4, and that will get us 0.6, that becomes nine, that's 39.6, add 32 back to it, that gets us 71.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the actual true conversion. But you can see just with a little estimation, we got very, very close to that. We're, we're less than half a degree off from the actual conversion. Okay, now that we know how to do them, I've got three examples here, 12 degrees, 24 degrees, and 40 degrees Celsius. And if you wanna pause the video, give it a shot in your head, see how easy you can actually do this. So 12, becomes 24 when we double it. When we subtract by moving over one decimal place, that would be 2.4. We're gonna round that down to two. That would become 22, add 32 back to that, that becomes 54 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? The next one, 24 becomes 48. 48, when you move over one decimal place, becomes 4.8. We're gonna round that up to five. That becomes 43 add 32 to that, that becomes 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And then finally, 40 degrees, this one will come out 100% accurate. This is 80 degrees minus eight will be 72, add 32 to it, that becomes 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if we go back and we do these others accurately, you can do, let's do 24, that would be 48, and it'll be minus 4.8 instead of minus five. That'll get us 0.2, that'll be 42 point, no, excuse me, 43.2. 43.2 plus 32 will be 75.2 degrees. So you can see that we are within 0.2 just with our estimation. So now let's try it with negative numbers, which you can also do in this method with just a slight tweak. 
Okay, so we have negative 14 degrees Celsius and negative 22 degrees Celsius. And for the moment, we're going to just ignore the fact that this is a negative, and we're just going to do it in the same method. So 14 doubled will be 28, okay? When we move over one decimal place, that's 2.8. We're going to round that up to 3, okay? That will become 25. Now at this step, because we started with a negative number, we want to turn that back into a negative number and then we'll add 32 degrees to that and that will get us our answer at 7 degrees Fahrenheit. I think the actual conversion is 6.8, but let's do the math on it. So 28 minus 2.8, that will be 0 0.2, 7 from 2, or 2 from 7, I'm sorry, will be 5. This will be 25.2, add 32 to that. Oh, that would be negative. Add 32 to that, and that gets us our answer at 6.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can, I, I like doing the estimation because it's very rare that I need to convert a temperature to exactly what it is, but whichever you find more convenient for you. So now we'll do negative 22. So again, we're going to forget for the moment, for the moment that the uh, number starts out negative, we'll just do 44. Now we're going to subtract, that would be 4.4, we'll round it down to 4, that would become 40. Now because it started as a negative, we'll put it back as a negative, add 32 to it, and that becomes negative 8 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the conversion from negative 22 to Fahrenheit. Okay, now we're going to do a conversion where we start off with the degree Celsius in a decimal form instead of a whole number. So we're going to do this accurately and we'll do the estimation as well. We'll start off with the estimation. So first thing we want to do is double this. That becomes 60.8 degrees. We'll save that to do uh, the true one. Well, 60.8 will round up to 61. And then if we move that over one decimal place, that becomes 6.1. So we'll round down to 6. That becomes 55 degrees. Add 32 to that. That becomes 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Now if we want to do the accurate version of this, this would be 60.8 and then it would be minus 6.08. That will get us 27, that would be 54.72 degrees. We add 32 back to it and that gets us our answer at 86.72 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see that with our estimation, we are very close to the actual conversion. We're within 0.28 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can do this with, again, whole numbers or uh, numbers of Celsius that are multiples of five are really easy to do, but you can also do it with stuff like numbers that don't come out as whole numbers in the, in the second part here, or you can do it with negative numbers, or you can do it as we showed with decimal numbers as well. Now there is a point at which Celsius and Fahrenheit have the same numerical value, and that happens to be at negative 40 degrees Celsius. So I want to show you how this actually comes out perfectly. So we'll take 40, we'll double it to 80, okay? Move over one decimal place, that becomes 8. We'll subtract 8 from 80, which gives us 72. Now we started off with negative, so we want to change this to a negative. Add 32 back to it, and that gets us our answer at negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now these are just some mental math tricks that I use to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit in my head. I realize that in today's world, all you got to do is pull it up on a smartphone, so this is something you may never ever use, but I always find that it's useful to do these uh, in my head, just keep my brain sharp. Uh, these little tricks like this just, you know, they keep your memory or keep just keep you on your toes. I, I don't know. I find them useful. You may not. At any rate, if you like this sort of stuff, hit, leave me a comment down below if you find this useful. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next one.